From gimmicks and upsells to sweet versus savory, we've got the truth for you today about Disney snacks. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog, and you know we are all about the Disney food and the snacks here on this channel. We have eaten everything, we've been everywhere, and we're on top of all the new and updated snacks in Disney World. Now, something that we've realized is there are some specific truths about these snacks and information that we wanna share with you so you can make better choices about where you spend your snack dollars when you're in Disney World. And to help you understand why Disney makes some of the choices that they make about what snacks they offer in their parks and resorts. Now, a lot of this information, we get questions about all the time here at DFB, so this is also hopefully answering a lot of your FAQs about Disney snacks. First up, sweet versus savory. We often get asked why a lot of the snacks we feature are sweet on Disney Food Blog, especially on our social channels and on our site. I hate to say it, but the truth is there are just a lot more sweet snacks than there are savory, and there's a reason for this. Disney's done its research, and according to the Food Institute, citing studies that have been backed by Frito-Lay and Smuckers, consumers find sweet snacks more appealing than all other types of snacks. And the types of consumers who find sweet snacks are appealing are the types of consumers Disney's trying to reach. So that includes Instagrammers, influencers, etc. And we'll tell you how they're doing that later in this video. But while Disney does have plenty of savory snacks, some of our favorites being the amazing pulled pork fries at Flame Tree Barbecue in Animal Kingdom, the spicy banyan skewer at Bengal Barbecue in Disneyland, the pulled pork and shrimp mac and cheese at Eight Spoons Cafe in Animal Kingdom, and the sweet and spicy waffle sandwich at Sleepy Hollow in Magic Kingdom, it is the sweet snacks that really drive foot traffic and go on bucket lists the most often. So sweet snacks sell, and Disney knows that, which is why they put a lot of time and energy behind those adorable character treats like cupcakes and caramel apples. It's a cycle. People love sweet snacks. Disney loves people buying sweet snacks. Disney makes sweet snacks extra desirable. People buy them, and then people post them on Instagram, and the cycle continues. And basically everyone's happy, because how can you not be happy when you're holding a cupcake that looks like your favorite Disney character? Let's talk about gimmicks. Now that's another secret of Disney snacks. Disney can use compelling and destination worthy snacks to increase free marketing via social media and drive traffic to special locations. So this is straight up marketing prowess, you guys. This is business. Disney uses those over the top and intriguing snacks to make sure foot traffic is going the places they want it to go. Now many of Disney snacks are more or less mass produced and can be found in multiple locations and shops like the Mickey bar, can be found literally anywhere on property and the standard packaged snacks are everywhere. But Disney locations have learned that they can make a huge splash by adding a photograph-worthy and super unique snack, usually a sweet one, to their menu, which, because so many of us are driven by FOMO, which is fear of missing out, and Instagram likes, that will drive a good amount of traffic to that location in order to get the shot. Now, I'm not sure if this is a directive from high-level Disney execs, or if it's simply smart thinking on the part of those who had the bakeries and food locations themselves, but Disney's never going to turn down free marketing, and that's exactly what they get as a result of these over-the-top goodies. So good examples of this are those seasonal cupcakes that pop up just for a day or two, like the Stitch 626 Day Cake and the Blue Dole Whip Cone, which both created sellout lines the one day they were available. The 2319 Cupcake at Cosmic Rays was available for one day and of course brought tons of folks in. And holiday themed treats like the Chocolate Chestnut Pine Cone, part of the flurry of fun holiday celebrations at Hollywood Studios, ended up being a must get and must Instagram for many people last year. Also, there's limited time movie themed treats like the Rotate petite cakes at Amaretts. We've seen them for Toy Story 4, Aladdin, and Lion King. And new location must-gets like the blue and green milk at Galaxy's Edge and the rainbow of colorful drinks at Oga's Cantina. If you don't get the picture, were you even there? And just plain, let's get people to go someplace they never go, like Aristo Crepes Bubble Waffle Trophy or the OG gimmick, The Kitchen Sink. Something that sort of piggybacks on this concept, note that plenty of third-party companies who run food locations at Disney have also caught on to that trick, and now Instagrammable food is being used in much the same way that companies use discounts to bring in foot traffic. So while discounts are still very popular, and you'll find them offered from many of the third-party owned restaurants like Blaze Pizza, Frontera Cucina, and Disney Springs, you'll also find other gimmicks that are entirely food-based. So Wolfgang Puck Bar and Grill has started introducing over-the-top Sundays, like the 4th of July 
July Sunday and the Campfire Sunday. And alcoholic popsicles are all the rage at Paddlefish and Pizza Ponte. Don't forget the giant refillable Coke bottle that you can pick up at the Coca-Cola store. So in addition to offering discounts to bring in foot traffic, these companies are also smartly offering menu items that aren't necessarily discounted, but do offer the siren song of social media success. I don't know about you, but I will definitely make a trek for a tasty and adorable treat. Plus, some of the best Disney snacks are hidden at out-of-the-way places. we got a whole video about that. And a lot of times, the only way you'll know about that super awesome snack is to see it on Instagram. So I think it's a win-win if they lure me someplace with a crazy cupcake. Now, the next thing you need to know about Disney snacks is upsells. Disney does use snacks to upsell other things to make you spend more money in certain circumstances. So a classic example of this is the Disney dining plan. So for all their appeal and our celebration of them, with the size of Disney's food portions, you probably don't have to eat snacks at all to stay full when you're at Disney World. But because they're compelling and fun to look at and getting all of that previously mentioned social media promotion, you simply have to get them. And so you book the Disney dining plan, locking yourself into at least two mega snacks per day. So that's definitely something Disney uses to push the dining plan is don't forget you get these two great snacks each day. Even though you probably don't need them from a physical standpoint, they do make the Disney dining plan seem more worthy of the price. All right, merchandise. These days, Disney's been introducing snacks to accompany their merchandise line. So that's using their snacks to upsell merchandise. So that started with the rose gold, where we had the rose gold cupcake to accompany the rose gold ears two years ago now. And then we moved into millennium pink, iridescent. Remember that one? Potion purple, briar rose gold, and now imagination pink. And if you're going to get the best Instagram picture you can, you've got to have the ears, the spirit jersey, and the cupcake, of course, right? So Disney's definitely using food items to upsell their merchandise as well. Now they're also upselling hard ticket events with snacks. They use the lure of fun snacks to get you to attend and pay more at special events. So a good example is the Villains After Hours. They can charge more for the Villains After Hours because there are specialty snacks available at the Villains After Hours that aren't available at the other After Hours events. This is also true of the Christmas parties, the Halloween parties. All of these have free snacks included, but they add fun, pretty, unique, and exclusive snacks to the parties that you actually have to pay for, and that's an upcharge. Some of our favorites, and for real, we'll pay to go to the party to get these, are the Not So Poison Apple at Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party, one of my favorite cupcakes of all time. Those Haunted Mansion stretching room tarts, those were so much fun. And yeah, you actually had to go to four different places around the park to collect them. So talk about driving foot traffic where they wanted to go. That one's also at Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party a couple years ago. The chocolate and spiced chocolate Yule Logs at Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party, along with the caramel cream vanilla pea eclair that made its way back to Gaston's Tavern after the party ended. All of those, as well as the zero waffle sundaes, all of that stuff is put into place to draw traffic to those parties and those are definitely upsells for those tickets. Now some of these extras, merchandise and especially the dining plan can really pay off and make your trip a lot better because it's fun. But just keep in mind that Disney's got a team of marketing whizzes behind the scenes and all those upsells can add up fast so don't blow your budget for the gram. Now, another truth about Disney snacks is that many of them are overpriced for what you get. So the best snacks for Disney, not for you. So the best snacks for Disney are probably the ones that are easy to make, easy to distribute, and overpriced. So these are things like bottled water, Rice Krispie treats, regular cookies, generic cupcakes, boring funnel cakes. These are ubiquitous, easy to buy, but they're not the biggest bang for your Disney dining plan or out-of-pocket buck. So how can you get the most bang for your buck on the Disney dining plan? There are plenty of ways to make those snack credits worthwhile. So one, use all of your credits. Don't let any snack credits slip away. No snack credit left behind, like we say. Use your credits for big ticket items. So snacks over $6 are a great deal on the DDP, but you'll spot some for two or three, or even a side of plastic cheese for $1 counts as a snack credit. Do not use your snack credits for plastic cheese. Pay for that. Pay for that out of pocket. And we've got a whole video on the most expensive snack credits, but for some of our favorites, which can also double as a meal, are the mac and cheese at Eight Spoons Cafe, that pulled pork cheese fries at Flame Tree Barbecue, or the Colossal Cinnamon Roll for breakfast. It's totally shareable and it's as big as your head, so it's totally worth the Disney Dining Plan snack credit. Now, if there's a festival at Epcot, don't forget to save up those snack credits and snack around the world. Nearly all of the food items at those booths at the Epcot festivals are snack credit eligible, and a lot of them run $8 or more. So get a few of those dishes and you've created your own high-quality progressive Epcot dinner. 
All right, the next truth of Disney Snacks, there's something for everyone. If you're gluten-free, keto, vegetarian, you don't have to worry about not being able to find snacks in the parks. You don't have to go to a sit-down restaurant and have a specially made meal. There are special diet options all over Disney World. So plant-based items are becoming the norm and even non-sweet ones. I know people are really frustrated that all the plant-based items seem to be sweet, but you'll find vegan options at nearly every restaurant and even meat-heavy locations like Casey's now have plant-based hot dogs. So gluten-free snacks are readily available and you'll be able to indulge in cookies, Mickey beignets. Yep, just ask for them to be made gluten-free or vegan, whatever you need. And if you want the special diet baked goods mecca, head to Aaron McKenna's in Disney Springs for seriously good allergen-free treats. And they are really delicious. Don't forget, fruit-flavored Dole Whips are vegan and gluten-free. You can't have the chocolate or the vanilla. Those are not vegan. But fruit-flavored ones, vegan and gluten-free. Popcorn is vegan and gluten-free in Disney World. Plus, you can find dairy-free ice cream pretty much anywhere you'd find regular ice cream. So overall, I want to make sure that you guys understand we're answering some FAQs here. People want to know why things are always sweet and not savory. How does Disney use snacks to drive that foot traffic and get people to where they want them to be? And all of that is happening. You know, there is a marketing and a business strategy behind where they put snacks and what they do with snacks. And they're doing it really well. They're being really smart about it. But that doesn't mean you're being taken for a loop. But like I said, I'm happy to buy the Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party ticket if it means I get that Not So Poison Apple Cupcake. I love that thing. So understand what's going on. Make the best choices for you. Save money where you can. But if you want to splurge on some of these really great snacks, it's definitely worth it. So hopefully that's helped kind of give an understanding of why Disney does their snacks the way they do. And if you have any more questions, definitely let us know. And let us know what your favorite snacks are in the comments. We'd love to hear about it. Thanks for listening, you guys. And thanks for watching. This is AJ for Disney Food Vlog. And we'll see you real soon.